Hello and welcome to the Scar Night Magazine vodcast. This month we're looking at how you can use basic equipment to take pictures of the night sky. Now it may surprise you, but you really don't need a lot of expensive equipment to do astrophotography. A simple point and shoot digital camera like this one can actually take some really nice pictures of the moon's surface. All you need to do is switch the camera on and point it through the eyepiece on the telescope. Now this method of astrophotography is known as afocal photography or digiscoping. What you need to do is basically point the camera through the eyepiece and take pictures of sections of the moon. Then you can stitch them together in a graphics program like Photoshop and create a lovely mosaic. Here's a picture taken with this digital camera of the crater Clavius on the moon's surface just by pointing this camera through the eyepiece of that telescope. These cameras can also be good at taking pictures of night scenes with lovely landscapes, perhaps of the moon setting over some trees or buildings. When you're doing afocal astrophotography, particularly of something like the moon, there are a couple of things to consider. One thing I'd recommend is actually mounting the camera on a tripod, a simple inexpensive photographic tripod like this one, as it will keep the camera steady whilst you're pointing it through the eyepiece. Another thing to do is use the telescope's focuser to focus rather than the camera's, as this will give you much finer control. Lastly, if your camera has the function, use a self-timer on it, because this will stop the vibrations caused by your finger depressing the shutter when you take an image. Now there are also other cameras that are a little bit better suited to astrophotography than the standard point and shoot digital camera. And these are digital single lens reflex cameras or DSLRs. And this is an example here. And they have lots of advantages over the standard point and shoot digital camera. One of them is that you can actually take off the lens and replace it with other lenses or even attach the body of the camera to a telescope. Another great thing about these cameras is that you can leave the shutter open for long periods of time, several minutes in fact, using something called the bulb exposure built into the digital cameras. When using these cameras, it's a good idea to use a cable release, as this will stop you vibrating the camera when you press the shutter down as well, and this could ruin your astro images. Another advantage of these cameras is that they're much more sensitive than the standard digital camera. This allows you to collect much more light than the standard digital camera, so it's much better for taking pictures of things like stars and galaxies and nebulae. Now one of the trickiest things about astrophotography is actually getting your images in focus and crisp and sharp. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. If your camera has live preview function on the back where you can actually look at the LCD screen and see the image changing as you're focusing, use that particularly on the moon surface if you're doing uh, photography that way. Then there's another way as well and that's to use the autofocus on the camera and basically look at something like a distant street lamp or a very bright star or perhaps a bright planet and use the camera's autofocus to focus on that and then lock the manual focus in so that your focus can't change and don't touch the camera. Then when you come to take another picture, don't change anything on the camera's lens or even the focus and when you do take the picture, hopefully it should be in sharp focus. So what sort of astronomical phenomena can you take pictures of with this sort of camera? Well, an awful lot in fact. You can take wide field constellation shots by taking several 30 second or 60 second exposures and then stacking to them together. You also take pictures of meteors during a meteor shower, lovely wide field Milky Way shots if you take a long enough exposure at a high enough sensitivity. Also great for taking pictures of landscapes with the moon and stars over trees. And you can also take pictures of other phenomena such as the aurora if you're lucky to live in a polar region or even noctilucent clouds during the summer months. So there are all sorts of things you can take pictures of uh, with just using a standard photographic tripod and a DSLR. Well, that's it for this episode of the vodcast. Check out the March issue of Scart Night magazine for an expert tutorial on landscape astrophotography. And if you do take a great astro image, then why not enter it into the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition at the address below. That's www.nmm.ac.uk forward slash astrophoto. So good luck, clear skies, and I'll see you again next month.